Hello everyone, it's Hannah from Story Kids. Welcome back. I am so happy to have you here. If you've missed any of our recent episodes, they are linked down below this video as well as the link to our Facebook page, which your parents or guardians can check out if they want to be uh, notified whenever I post a new story. So today I have a really fun story for you. This one is called Caps for Sale and it's by Oh my goodness, I hope I can pronounce this name right. It's called, it's by Esfer Slobodkina. And the little tagline says, A tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. Now for those of you who don't know, a peddler is something that doesn't exist that much anymore. But it's a guy or a person who sells things uh, sort of like in a... A little push cart in the street. So if you've ever been to New York City and you've seen people uh, selling clothes or jewelry or things like that on the street, that's sort of like a peddler. It was a big business a long time ago and it doesn't exist that much anymore but it's a very fun, this is a very fun story and one that I used to love when I was your age. So it's caps for sale. Here we go. Once, there was a peddler who sold caps, like a traveling salesman. But he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. a lot of caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset the caps. As he went along, he called, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. That's pretty inexpensive for a hat, huh? This story was written in, hmm, when was it written? Let's see. It was written in 1940. And if you've ever, want, I know I'm interrupting the story for a minute, but if you've ever wanted to know when a story was published, when it first came out, you can turn, usually it's in the first or the second page of the book. So on this book, it's on the third page. And right on the inside cover, there's usually a little part that gives the information about the publisher. So this was first published in 1940. Back to the story. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up and down the street, and he walked, oh, he walked up the street, and he walked down the street, calling, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he. And he walked out of town, slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. Have you ever balanced things on your head like that? I have, but not that many. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, feels good. Then the gray caps. Yep, those are straight too. Then the brown caps. Mm -hmm. and then the blue caps. And then the red caps on the very top. And they were all there. Mm -hmm. 
They were all there. Look at that. I said exactly what the book said. So he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. And I know here at Story Kids we talk a lot about types of illustration. And these illustrations look to me like they have graphite or charcoal on them. That's sort of that pencil-y sort of uh, overlay that you see. So that's pretty cool. Okay, here we go. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. He looks very refreshed and rested, but do you see anything missing in this picture? I guess we'll find out. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just being silly. But before he sta but before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. Where did all the other caps go? I knew something was missing. He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. I wonder where his caps are. I certainly hope he finds them. Then he looked up into the tree. And what do you think he saw? Do you have any guesses? If you have a guess, pause the video and write down your guess and we'll see if you're right. Okay? Okay. On every branch, Set a monkey on every monkey was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. Did you guess that the monkey stole his caps? Did you guess that there were monkeys? I don't know. That would have been a pretty good guess. I never would have thought of that. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. Monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, tss, 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 tss. This made the peddler angry, so he shook both hands and said, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps! But the monkeys only shook their, both their hands back at him and said, That's a funny sound for monkeys to make. I've heard monkeys go, ooh, ooh, ah, 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 but never I guess this author has heard some different kinds of monkeys. What do you think? Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and said, Ugh, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, 
Can you guess what they said? They said, <laughs> What silly monkeys these are, huh? By this time, the peddler was really very, very, oh my goodness, very angry. Yes, that is how angry he was. He was so angry that he sounded like a siren. He stamped both his feet and he shouted, you monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both their feet at him and said, Will he ever get his caps back? I don't know. At this time, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground, and began to walk away. Do you have any predictions for what's going to happen next? I think we talked about predictions a couple episodes ago. That's when you make a guess based on what's happened so far. But then each monkey pulled off his cap and all the gray caps and all the brown caps and all the blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. These silly monkeys. The monkeys were copying everything the peddler had done. So when the peddler took off his cap and threw it down, so did the monkeys. What a silly answer to his problem. So, the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! The end. Did you like caps for sale? I really like it. I think it's very funny because the monkeys are copying or mimicking, that's a fancy word, everything that the peddler does. And so he finally figures out what to do quite by accident, huh? Yeah. And I also think that the drawings in this book are very funny. I hope you liked them as much as I did. So I have a challenge for you. If your parents will let you or your guardians why don't you log on to our Facebook account and there will be a post about caps for sale and if you would like to you can respond to that post telling me did you get the prediction right and what are the most things you've ever balanced on your head nothing breakable don't try it at home with any sort of glass or anything be careful and get your parents or guardians permission but try balancing some hats on your head. Tell me how many you can do if you get permission, okay? Okay, sounds good. So that was Caps for Sale. I hope you liked this silly story. Until next time, I am Hannah from Story Kids. Bye-bye everyone, keep on reading.